Every time you talk on the phone or go on the internet, what you say or type travels through its destination through fiber optics. Voice and data gets transmitted via pulses of light through hair thin glass fibers. Those fibers start out as a large glass tubes. First, workers unwrap the tubes. Then they submerge them in a corrosive bath of hydrofluoric acid that removes any oil residues. Then they set it to each end of a lake. As the tubes spin, they are heated with a hydrogen oxygen flame. When the glass turns white, it's getting close to hitting peak temperature. At about 3500 degrees, the two tubes fuse together. They put this new longer tube onto another lathe. As the tube spins, they inject a mixture of chemical gases inside. While a traversing burner heats everything up. The gas mixture contains liquid forms of silicon, an abandoned chemical element found in nature, and also germanium, a chemical element similar to a tin that's used in semiconductor in transistors and other electronic devices. As the gases heat, they undergo a chemical reaction that leaves a white suit on inside of the glasses to the heat fuses the suit forming what will eventually become the core of the optical fiber. The glass tube itself will form the fibers cover. When there is enough fusion, they turn up the heat until the suit itself turns into glass. Then they heat the glass tube enough to soften it and to soften the new glass inside the intense heat eventually makes the tube collapse on itself to form a solid rod. The internal structure of the optical fiber has been achieved. But it's in the form of a big bulky rod called a preform so that the next step is to fit in out first they excite the preform from the uncollapsed section of the glass tube then they install it vertically into the drawing tower which will draw out the final shape The drawing tower's oven heats one end of the preform to 3600 degrees. The glass softens. Gravity helps pull it down like honey dripping from a spoon. Then, using a glob of glass as a weight, they stretch the soft glass and keep stretching it until they formed a thin glass fiber. A series of pulleys measure the tension on the fiber as it's being drawn. A special monitor makes sure the fiber is precisely the right diameter, just 5 one thousand sub an inch. Then a fiber passes through the UV lamps that bake on an acrylic coating to protect against dust and other contaminants. Finally, the fiber is rolled on to a drum. From here, it's either shipped out as is or put into a cable. Fiber optic cables are expensive to produce, but they are smaller and lighter than traditional copper cables. They carry more information and need fewer repeaters to keep the signal from deteriorating and unlike copper wires, they are immune to electromagnetic interference. They are also hard to tap without being detected and all this is made possible by a complicated process based on a very simple principle. Light traveling through the glass.